Good morning. Welcome to the Therapy the Conversation Show. I am your host, Dr. Brian Jones, LPC. I'm joined today with my co-host monthly. She comes on. Y'all already know it, Dr. Marlo Mathis. Hello, hello, hey, Dr. Hello. Mathis. Hey, Dr. Jones. You are in the house today. today. Looking yes, all I nice am. and good. You go, you go, you go. <laughs> Thank but, you, sir. But welcome everybody to the Therapy the Conversation Show, where we have conversations around mental health, spirituality, and empowerment. And so that is a hot topic today especially with all that's going on in our world i mean there's so many things going on you know and i know um i think it was in either north carolina or south carolina um someone had uh mistakenly got shot in a mall and there's just so many things going on that's affecting our mental health and this show is all about working with people and dealing with people in you know with mental health and mental illness and mental challenges that we all face from a spiritual perspective. That's what we talk about on this show. And we have a special guest in the house, a pastor, y'all, in the house, (laughs) Pastor Spencer O'Neill. Welcome. Thank you so much. Pastor Spencer, I'm so glad you're here. here. And I've been to your church. He is the pastor of the lead pastor. I like that. Lead pastor of Global Impact Christian Ministries here in Stockbridge, Georgia. So welcome. And Dr. Marlowe, is going to formally introduce you and tell the people a little bit. And this is your pastor, right? This is my Are pastor. you claiming him as your pastor, yes, Mar- Dr. Marlowe? I am claiming him as my pastor. Wonderful. Again, thank you all for tuning in. I am Dr. Marlo Mathis, and um, my passion and my life's work is geared towards mental illness and helping everybody understand the importance of what that looks like. And so I wanted to start with talking to pastors. And, of course, who better to start with than my awesome, amazing Pastor Spencer T. O'Neill. Amen. And so he is our lead pastor. He is an awesome, awesome man of God. He preaches and teaches the word of God with conviction, and he makes us have fun on Sunday morning along with helping our souls get closer to Christ. And so it gives me great pleasure to have him to start this thing off mm-hmm. with our pastors talking about what this looks like and what mental health is all about. And so I do appreciate you, Pastor Spence, and I thank you for trusting me, yes. you know, even in your congregation as an elder of your church and taking over the pastoral care ministry, and it just means the world to me. That shows you the importance that he puts mm. in mental illness and mental health and us taking care of that whole person, that whole person, our minds, our bodies, mm. our spirits, you you know, and our souls. And so we always look at the physical yes. and, and we focus in on the spiritual, but we somehow miss out on that mental piece. Yes. And we are starting these conversations, yes. Brian. We've been doing it now for the last year. year. And yes, we, we are have. going to continue it until people catch on. Yes. And so, again, again, it gives me great pleasure, Pastor Spence, to have you on this show and to share your wisdom. This is a man of wisdom, yes. and he you are, you are going to be blessed. Know that you will be blessed. Yes. And so as we start these conversations, Pastor Spence, we want to um, talk to you, and, and if you would, just mm. give the people a little history of your walk and how you got to where you are um, in ministry and how important this thing of mental health is. And you as a pastor, Have you always engaged and thought that mental illness and mental health was important in the church? And if so, talk about that. And if not, talk about that and why you were or where you are today and the role that you play in making this thing happen. Okay, well, just to give you a little context about my walk, um, I grew up a church boy. Mom drove me to church uh, every (laughs) Sunday, but I hated church. I I hated church um, because I didn't believe that the people actually lived according to the Bible, according to what they talked about. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of rah-rah on Sunday. Uh, everybody was hyped. Everybody was excited. But then I'm watching the feet throughout the rest of the week. Everybody's miserable. Everybody's struggling. Pray for me. I'm going through. And I just, I, I thought there just had to be more. I, I actually got called to preach at the age of 19, but I was a sophomore at Georgia Southern University. <laughs> no way, Jose, God, you got to come back and visit me later. Not today. So, <laughs> Wrong call, wrong person. (laughs) (laughs) So about 11 years later, I started really entertaining Mm. the idea that, you know, I kind of sensed that God wanted to do something uh, through me, through my personality. But I I didn't want to get into church as Mm -hmm. usual. 
So after humbling myself to the to the call, mm-hmm. I said, God, if we're gonna do this, just promise me this that that I can have a little fun, and that I do the kind of ministry that actually makes a difference in the lives of people. Wow. So starting out 2006, we planted the church, uh, my wife and I, and we just began to watch church grow. Mm. But then I began to realize, for many people, that church wasn't uh, actually what it should be. Mm, uh oh. <laughs> I started to realize that most people that come to church, they use church as a coping mechanism instead wow. of it being a change mechanism. And I didn't want to participate in that process anymore. So for 30, 30 minutes, I give a sermon. They come and medicate themselves, <laughs> but then they go back <laughs> to life. What? <laughs> so I didn't want to be a part of that process anymore. So I said, God, what, what do we need to do? To actually produce the change that the people need. Hold on now, now you on the show, you on the therapy the conversation show. We'll be talking about me. You said, can you repeat that again? I we ain't gonna hold up the show, but but repeat that again. You said they come and they do what to the? They come and, and get medicated. Church was the coping mechanism, but I'm reading my Bible and it says it should be the change mechanism. Ooh, now you already starting off That's like what I'm that. Talking about. Oh, now you on to something. Truth. That's preachable. Now that can preach. <laughs> <laughs> now, hold on now. Y'all can call in at 678-528-9482. That's 678-528-9482. And if you're on Facebook, send a message. We have several people that are joining us. We have uh, Rob Jerome. Thank you for joining us. We have Dr. Jesse Sanders is on. If you are on, there's a lot of people. Oh, the numbers are going up. Yes. Please yes. send a word. Put a word that you're here and that just say amen or something, you know, because it's powerful. All right. Go ahead. Hey, let's carry on. <laughs> but 678-528-9482, all right? So just send us a word, and we have someone else in the shell. Thank you for joining us. Go ahead. All right, and, and as as God began to deal with me with that, he began to show me that I was a major part of, of that coping mechanism taking place. Oh, my goodness. So I had to look back at the history of, of the black church, yeah. and, and when, you, when you just look at where we've been, what mm. we've gone through, uh, slavery and Jim Crow, and and for for a major part, um, you needed that emotional, um, just that 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 spirit, that spiritual service yes. that that would get you motivated to carry on with life. So it was no real um, teaching training. It was just come and let's have a high spirited service because we got to go back and pick cotton, or we got to go deal with with all of these segregation issues that we're dealing with. But as we evolve wow. as a yes. people. A lot of that preaching context and, and church service just followed us on into the 21st century. Mm-hmm. So now as a people, we've evolved to a certain place in society, but did the church really evolve oh, with the wow. people? Hold on now. What? Now, you know, I know you used to preaching, Pastor, but you got you know, you got an audience out there. So you gotta <laughs> drop it on them and let them sit. Let it, as they say, let the word marinate. Mm-hmm. Now you are dropping some golden. I want to stop you, about. but yes. that is some powerful, powerful stuff that is going on right there. I mean, powerful. You thought you went back to slavery time and brought it, bringing it and back up to now, and where all of yes. this comes from. And that trauma, that trauma yes. is what you're talking yes. about. I mean, That's good stuff. I'm just gonna be quiet because you just on it. <laughs> <laughs> But you're dropping some golden nuggets, and so we want to make sure that we emphasize those things because that's what we're seeing, you know. And there's no change in a lot of people, right. you know. People are not living any differently. There's no trans- transformation that's happening a lot of times in a lot of churches, and so that's what I'm I'm hearing. But but go ahead, and Dr. just Marlon. hence why we need this avenue and this venue to help people understand that we have got to evolve. We have got to stop that mentality and that stigma associated with mental health. So help us out. Help us out, Pastor. Yeah, and when I use the word (laughs) evolve, I don't want to scare any of my Christian uh, friends out there. I still believe in the Bible. Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever, (laughs) but we have to look at Mm. the ministry of Jesus Christ a lot of people just look at him as the savior, the healer, the deliverer. But when you follow Jesus throughout the Bible, the New Testament, Jesus was therapeutic. Oh, right? oh. He, he, he wanted to deal with people. He yes. wanted to deal with issues. And, Come on, and he asked the tough questions. The woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, you know, he probed. He dug deep beneath the surface. And, and that's what ministry yes. really is. 
You know what Mary and Martha, Mary's yes. upset, Martha's upset, where have you been? And Jesus began to deal with those tough and deeper issues. So we, we see a track record of Jesus really being this compassionate mm. uh, person as he walked the face of the earth, and he wanted to minister to the total yes. person. And Talk not, to us. Not Talk just to us. The natural person. He wanted to dig deep into the spiritual and the emotional psyche of people. That's the savior that I see in the Bible. Oh my that's, goodness. That's that, the one we gotta represent in the twenty first century church. That's as we say in Simony, that is a wonderful theological construct. Yes, it is. I mean, you have just broken I don't even know what to say. You know, I don't normally got something to say, you all, but that is just powerful. How did you come to this kind of revelation and this theology? Because what it really is, it's called a theology of mental health that you already are putting, you know, out there and that you're living and, and breathing and moving through, you know, how, how did you come to this revelation? It, it took years of just watching and, and studying what I did as a pastor. And I would notice how some people would, you know, the sermons were good. The ministry that we did throughout the week was good. But then I started seeing that people really needed more. And and we come through the, the mega church um, cycle where you know we, we had these large gatherings, and one of the dangers of having large gatherings, and, and please, every church should be a great sized church. But one of the things that we lose in that is intimacy mm -hmm. and accountability. Mm -hmm. So I'm facing that challenge now as we grow. You grow, um, yes. I'm still praying, God. Yes, I like what you're doing. You're sending people from all over the all over the metropolitan area of Atlanta, but teach me how to maintain a level of accountability. And let us grow intimately together because that's what people are blessed. Because that is the ministry of Jesus. And that's what we call pastoral care. Yes. You know, yes. that we're not caring for people and we have to care for people's minds. Right. You and know, we, we got to help them along in that process. Let's give some more shout outs. Y'all got a following okay. going on here. Well, we have Allison from Alabama. All right. We have, uh, is it the. Donita, please excuse me if I mispronounce your name. Yes. Uh, Elder Belford. Belford. Elder yeah. Belford. Oh, okay. Hey, Elder Anita. Belford. <laughs> hey, and she's just giving shouts out. Global Impact Ministries is on the, the Facebook page. What's up? What's up? And have all hey, these hey, people hey. on and stuff. Uh, Linda is on. Um, and uh, and everybody's just giving some shouts out. We have James is on. James Kynes. Hey, he's he's, a, he's doing some wonderful work with his nonprofit and helping youth. So that's just awesome, awesome, awesome. And then Rob Jerome is saying some people use uh, church as a coping mechanism. And then what he says, they come to church and get temporarily medicated and go back to suffer for yep. the rest of the week. <laughs> All right, Rob Jerome, you on it. <laughs> All right. So Pastor Spence, in my... Um doctoral program. I dealt with mental health, mental health and wholeness, looking at a um, theological and psychological framework for supporting mental health in the black church. When I introduced that concept, um, some people came to me and said that there are going to be some pastors that give you pushback because my ultimate goal is to be able to share this and go to other churches and help them understand the importance of mental health. You have a good handle on the importance of it. Why do you think some pastors may um, rejected or, or, or not buy into it or think it's not necessary. Where does that thinking come from? I, I, I think there's, there's a stigma somewhat in our culture, uh, in the black culture, that, that we can't be transparent. We can't admit <laughs> that we have real issues. I think we're taught to camouflage most of the stuff that we go through. I mean, everybody knows when the praise break start and the praise break ends. We got all the church cliches down pat. So when we begin to introduce ideas like mental health and mental illness and that kind of awareness to the church, a lot of pastors just kind of back away from it because they're not familiar with it. Mm. And they're not familiar with it. This is, do we really want to let this secular thing into the oh. church? Not knowing of the fact of the things that we just talked about, that, that Jesus was concerned about the mind and the mental health of the people, you know, that should be total prosperity for the saints, yes. you know, soul, mind, body, and spirit. Yeah. That, there has to be that. So I think once you begin to talk to pastors about that, um, most pastors are trained to think that we can pray away anything. Yes, yes. You know, let's pray. Let's put some prayer <laughs> on it and everything's going to be all right. So I knew coming up in the church, if I went and talked to my pastor about issues at the end of the conversation, well, we're going to pray about it. Mm. Well, what happens after we pray about it? Uh oh, you know, oh and, that's and, the question. And faith without works is dead. So I got faith in a real God, but what am I willing to do? You know, it's kind of it's kind of crazy for, for people 
to spend money to go see a dentist and take care of the teeth. Yes. But they won't take care of the mind. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So, and for me as a pastor, I had to I had to become aware of the fact that hey, I want you to take care of your mind. I want to preach to you, but how much can a thirty minute sermon do? How much can a thirty minute sermon do? The sermons really do sermons really produce change? I think they can be the catalyst to change, but there has to be action that comes along after the sermon. And I think that counseling, spiritual therapy, has got to be incorporated into that. They can coexist together. Pastor, I am sitting over here, honestly. <laughs> people know me. I normally, you know, I am just in awe. And yeah. they know I always got something to say. This is my show, <laughs> and I got something to say. But I don't know what to, I, I mean, I'm just saying you are laying out. And, you know, an audience, I mean, I just want you all to be in tune with what is being said. We're going to have to probably repeat this because what you're saying, I can't even take notes on because I'm just so touched by hearing a pastor, a lead pastor, saying exactly what myself and the work also that Dr. Marlowe, you know, our passion. So you right on it. And this is what we're seeing, you know. So what would you say to pastors and ministers first? And then we're going to talk to congregations out there. You know, the camera's right there, just out there. What would you say to, to the pastors to maybe the first step in making some changes and inviting mental health into their congregations, but first into themselves as far as they're getting the help because the blind can't lead the blind and, and, and we're going to go anywhere. So what would you say to them, that, you know, pastors and ministers that are listening, what would you say, what would be the first step of I, transformation, I, of, of opening their minds to mental health? I think the first step would, would be for them. To, to engage in the process of mental health. Uh, one, one of the struggles for pastors is because of finding that safe place. Yes. There are so many pastors that don't even have a proper spiritual cover. Mm. Uh, they don't have a place where they can vent. They don't have that safe zone in them. They're afraid to open up yes. because of confid yes. confidentiality breaches. Yes. Um, so when they are not invested in it, it's, it's kind of hard to, to make the people buy into something that you're truly not bought into yourself. Mm. So I think the first step has to start where, where we start seeking. Yeah. Um, you know, over the past few years, we've seen so many pastors commit suicide. Yes, um, yes, um, even they, in Georgia. Yes. We, we help people with all of their problems, but who's helping us? Yes. And then I think once pastors can go, once you can go and have therapy, mm -hmm. when you develop a self-care plan for yourself, you see the benefits of that. You, mm -hmm. you see the benefits of that, and now you're willing to share it with the people. So I think that's the first step investing in, in, in your own mental health first. And once you do that, you can bring that message back to the people and then be transparent about it. Yeah. Uh, most of the congregants at my church know I, I'm touched. <laughs> I'm, I'm special, Dr. Brown. I, Girl, I, got, go I got issues. I, I, got, I got to deal with myself <laughs> in order for me to be able to deal with somebody else. So we, we try to um, present that culture. And then one of the things I would encourage pastors to do, one of the books that turned it around for me, Dr. Uh -oh. Mathis, uh, when she first got to the church, uh, yeah. we did a, the entire church. Uh, January 2016 was kind of like a turning point for me as a leader. Uh -huh. It was the uh, emotional, emotionally healthy spirituality, uh -huh. Peter Scazzaro. Uh -huh. Oh, I, I well, got to check that one out. Yeah. Church, Say that again. The, it's the, the emotionally healthy spirituality, okay. Peter Scazzaro. Okay. And one of the one of the premise statements in the book was it is impossible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. <laughs> Say that, that one, again, um, because that that's, I wish I had somebody to put that in the comments. Somebody put that in the comments, because that is where it is. Say that again, Pastor. It is impossible to be spiritually mature spiritually. Go while ahead. remaining emotionally immature. Oh, my yeah, goodness. So it, it was that Oh, my goodness. That kind of shifted the game for me because, you know, most people want to be prophetic. They want to be deep. <laughs> they want to be spiritual. <laughs> but you are an emotional train wreck. Oh! Yeah, so it was when we took time to start unpacking that particular book that I think the ministry began to share. Wow. Hold it, it right there. Now, we got people that are just responding, and I'm so glad y'all are, you, you know, y'all not calling in, but y'all are responding on Facebook. We have uh, Jeffrey Burrell. Thank you for watching. We have Miss Dudley. Thank you for watching. She's a supporter of the show. We have Sherelle Patrice. 
is it Sher- yeah, Sherelle? Yeah, Elder Sherelle. Elder yeah, Sherelle. Elder Sherelle, okay, mm-hmm. is on there. And um, and they and your uh your church is saying, you know, I guess the, the Facebook page is saying stop stop camouflaging the issues, let's pray about it and then act upon it. Yes. I mean, who is who is leading that in That's in here? Right. So somebody's doing something yeah. with your church and saying it, and that is so powerful. We have uh Thon- Thonita Belt. The Bedford? Mm-hmm. Yeah, is mm-hmm. that correct? The Alita. Alita. Yeah. Say it again. Yes, give her a shout out. Hey, I'll make Elder sure. I, I'd be messing up people's <laughs> names, uh, you know, on the end. Plus, this is so small sometimes. But we have Sonia, uh, Yadon, uh, thank you for joining us. Kim um, Harrell is on. Linda yeah. Howard is on. Uh, Kim, I already, already said her name. April Robinson is on. Um, Erica Geralds, uh, thank you for joining us. And E. Dub. Heart is on saying, preach pastor, preach pastor. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm yes. just, well, we want to just carry on. I mean, you're just, I mean, I don't even know where we go. All right, so the first thing is I do hear one thing about that pastors need a safe place to explore those things, you know, a safe place to to be transparent and to grow in those areas because a lot of us, so my question to you, and I'm going to put you on the spot, if we're not transparent as ministers and pastors and leaders, what are we? Uh, we practice the same thing that's been going on since the fall of man. Uh, when you look at the Genesis account, uh, after the fall, they went deep into a place of shame mm. and guilt and cover mm. up. Oh. <laughs> and those three, those three oh. things are still going on today, Dr. Oh my Jones. God. You shame, said shame, guilt, guilt and, and cover, cover up. Cover up. Shame, guilt, and cover up. And when you read that Genesis account, and, and this is when things really begin to, to shift for me, uh, you know, they pass blame. Uh, she, she blamed the serpent. He blamed her. Shame came as a result of it. The guilt of what they had just done uh, caused them to go pick fig leaves and cover themselves up. But here's the beautiful part of why I'm so invested into mental health and and trying to make sure that we produce the change and not the coping. God came walking in the evening in the garden, and he asked the question, Adam Eve, where are you? Where are you? Now, he's God. He's omnipotent. Yes. Omniscient. Yes. Omnipresent. Yes. Mm. He knows all. So why bother asking the question, where are you? Because if he if he's God, he's already knows. So so he already knows. So God did not ask that question positionally. He was asking the question <laughs> relationally. <laughs> where where are you? What have you guys done? Oh God. Why? What's going on? And, and, and and it's with that that I began to see that mental health and, and, and mental totality of healing and, and all of that can take yeah. place when we begin to ask that same question. Yes. Where are you? And that's the question that we got to ask in pastoral care. Care, yeah. Pastoral care. And, and, and when we meet with people, when we talk with people, where are you? And that's the most present question today. And what's really going on? That's Even it. when people come into my counseling practice, um, I, you know, I really, Pastor, I really, you know, help people to say, what's really happening? You got all this stuff, and the stuff you're sharing a lot of times, even in mental health counseling, is not, you know, really what's it's going on, but that's the surface. Yes, that's but what's the root? The root? Yeah. What's really happening? Yeah. And and I don't think we stop, you know, even in pastoral care in the church, we stop and ask questions like that, well, you know, because we got these cliches, as you said earlier, you know, I'm blessed and highly favored and I'm yeah. this, but not, but that's still not explaining how, what's really going on with you. Yes. And it's okay to say, look, I've had a rough week. I need support. I need help. I'm on the edge, edge, you know, people, you have to ask for help, you know, and, and, and not just walk around as you said in this type of what I call hypocrisy mm-hmm. where you just everything is always good. I mean and God is good. It doesn't change who God is. Right. But we gotta we have to begin to look at those things and and say, but that creating that safe place, getting the help that they need, and dealing with the second part is dealing with that shame, guilt, and cover up and that tendency to blame others even the devil (laughs) you know people love to say that you know the devil did you know and the devil but what about you god has given us authority and power and we are in control of our own reality and our own lives and that's the next thing pastor is that taking responsibility 
That's it. We do not take responsibility as pastors and leaders for, you know, for anything. We don't take responsibility a lot of times for our own That's stuff. True. So, I mean, I just, I mean, you're right on it. You're yeah. right on it. So what would you also say? Okay, so if we get the pastors and leaders in order, what, you know, and get their mental health and get their knowledge, you know, and, and, and educating, what would you say to congregants about getting uh, mental health services and support and working on their minds? Well, it, it has to be a message, um, you know, I, the power of the influence that we have as pastors, it, it's unreal. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. They, they, they want to be guided. They, yeah. they, yeah. they want to be led. And as pastors, we have to be aware of the influence that w we have, you know. So if we can push people to go out to vote, if we can push yes. people to do all of those things, then we got to encourage people that they got to take responsibility as it pertains to mental health. Uh, so with that, you got to put programs in place, systems yes. in place. Yes. You got, and, and a lot of times pastors feel limited in resources. Mm -hmm. or they feel a little equipped. Mm -hmm. I don't have the pedigree. I don't have the training. Yeah. But that's the beautiful part about partnership. Yes. Uh, collaboration. <laughs> you I'm, I'm, on it. I'm big on collaboration. Yes. Uh, uh, Dr. Mathis will tell you. Yes. There are just certain things in our church that we're not going to do. Mm. Um, our church does not have a food pantry. And one of the reasons we don't have a food pantry is because there's a food pantry less than a mile away down the street from my church. First thing I did was go to the food pantry and say, how can we wow. assist? But some pastors struggle with that because they want to do everything so that they can get the credit. Yes. Yeah. I always tell people, it doesn't matter who gets the credit as long as God gets the glory. Yes. yes. So if you foster that spirit of collaboration, then you partner with people in the community, the, the people that have the degrees mm -hmm. like you guys, and bring mm -hmm. them into your church. Yes. Let's do some training. Let's do some suicide yes. awareness. Let's let's yes. do some let's let's teach the people how to recognize signs when your child may be struggling. Yes. You know, oh my looking for goodness. these particular things. Because yes, we want to teach you the Bible. But we also want to give you some some practical practical training that can help make your life. So yes, and that he, is and, so and true. And what he hit on, and, and that is so true, how people really look to their leaders. They look to their mm. pastors, and they are going to follow their pastors. So if they're setting those examples, if pastors are talking about mental illness and it's real and talking about their own issues, it's giving them permission, mm. giving them the permission to be transparent and to be open and to understand that, you know, we don't have it all together. Things have happened in our lives. Lives. You know, you got people in our churches who've been molested as children yes. and they grow up, you know, trying to deal with that. But it's difficult. Mm -hmm. And so they can't get that fullness of who they are in God because they're wrestling with those things that are going on in their mind that they, they have not been able to share. Yes. And so when we can have pastors such as my pastor who gives us permission, who puts it out there, who makes things available, the people will follow. He talks about it. He incorporates it in his sermons, mm. you know, so that we really fully understand mm -mm -mm. that this thing is more about than just coming to church and praying about it. And so for so long, you've had people who in our families, y'all have heard it, All you right know, now. don't be talking about our family business. You you know what's go on in this house oh, stays, stays in, this in the house. house. You know, and so do all the pain and the agony as well. And then we don't want to be labeled as crazy, mm -hmm. you know, but we are because we're not getting the help that we need. And so this push, opening up this conversation, is just so necessary and important so that we become whole human beings. Yes, yes, yes. And and everybody know I'm just silent. I don't know. I mean, I'm just in awe. And I'm just taking notes over here. <laughs> and I'm in tears in some ways because it's just so refreshing to have a lead pastor and just to hear your heart on mental health and also the theological component in understanding that theology of mental health. That is just a powerful concept in dealing with it. Now, you have time to call in. We're going to be on until 10, a little bit before 10. The number is 678 Five two eight nine four eight two. People are hearts, and y'all got hearts and likes and preach <laughs> on and and everything else on here. April Hauser um, has joined us, uh, and I mean, there's so many other people. I'm trying to you know get all the names, but uh, but uh, I mean, it's just powerful. I mean, so any questions you all have 
for the pastor or for myself or for Dr. Marlowe? I mean, what are y'all hearing? What are you seeing? What are you, you know, I mean, we want to be engaging too because that's a lot of information you, the pastor has shared with us that is right on point. So definitely please, um, you know, reach out. I mean, if you have a question, you can put post it right on Facebook here, or you can call in, as I said, at 678-528-9482. That's 678-528-9482. And they said, somebody said, North Carolina is listening. Annette Miller said, North Carolina is listening. Pastor Spence, I'm enjoying this message this morning. So, I mean, it is, we're right on it. Y'all are right on it. All of us are right on it. And this is where we are. Dealing with active shooting yes. that is going on, you know, I mean, I mean, the police issues and challenges we have in, I mean, from, you know, just just all kinds of voter suppression and just all kinds of things that have happened locally right here in Georgia. I mean, people are really and then even in my practice, a lot of times people are having major challenges, um, harassment and threats on their job. Mm-hmm. You know, that is really going on, and people are really struggling with those type of things. And um, and a lot of people are out on, on family medical leave, you know, at, you know, as far as taking some time off to be in treatment and stuff like that. And that's another component, too, that's very vital as we're talking about people in ministry, ministry burnout. Yes. You know, because, I mean, sometimes ministry can be burned. I mean, you can be really burned out. Oh, yeah. And that's a mental health challenge it and is. a mental health issue. Now, what do you do for self-care? Then may I ask that question? I, I, <laughs> I, I have a self-care plan. Oh, uh, I love it. There you go. And uh, I have a Put pastor. it out there. Every pastor needs a pastor. Okay. And uh, Dr. R.E. Vernon uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, is my pastor. Okay. And he pushes mental health. He, yes. he pushes so we, my wife and I, we do the retreats when he when he makes the call. My wife, I I get away from the pulpit. Uh, some yes. pastors think they got to preach all fifty two Sundays. All right now, so that's why I got great elders like <laughs> Dr. Matthews. Hey, you know I'm gonna give you a good spill but, from time to time, but I'm gonna take time for myself. Yeah. So uh, self therapy, uh, checking in yes. with my pastor. I love uh, it. Just for the simple things. My wife and I, we love to travel. So Wonderful. We, we get away. So I'm not gonna carry the burdens of the people without taking time to uh, restore myself. You know, one thing I learned about ministry, uh, maybe one of the reasons why David wanted his cup to flow till it overflow was so that he could have something on his salsa. Come on, because come on. You, you keep on, on preaching like that, I'm <laughs> going to have to come over to your, <laughs> to, to I got to come to visit or do yeah. something because yeah. I'm here, I'm loving what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah, you, never, you, you, you never minister from your cup. Oh, you minister my from goodness. Your salsa. Oh, yeah, my You minister goodness. from the overflow. So if I'm, oh, if I'm in the my pool goodness. as an empty cup, then what do I really have? To give to the Pastor, people. you wow. have blessed us. We do have a caller online. Uh, caller, thank you for calling the Therapeutic Conversation Show, 108 Praise Radio. Uh, you're on live. Let's see whether, look, technology is working today. Hello. Thank you for calling the Therapeutic Conversation Show. I can't. I can't hear them. All right, so we're still working on that. Um, somebody's going to. So they can just chime in as soon as they, uh, but I mean, but just a powerful, as I said, and as I said, everybody who know me, I mean, I am in awe. I'm just full. <laughs> yeah, and I think the other thing has I'm been full. that you, you didn't mention was the exercise, you know, taking oh, care of your oh, yeah. physical component as yeah. well. Tell them about that. Yeah. Uh, today, actually, at, a, at 2 o'clock, I got to bury my trainer. Um, my trainer is, um, he was a, one of the original members of my church. 44, wow. 44 years old, perfect physical specimen. Um, oh, he took my. time to share with me the importance of taking care of my body. So that's one of the things that, that I'll, I'll continue to do uh, just with taking walks. Uh, that's the most therapeutic time yes, of it the day is. for me. Yes. You know, okay. That three-mile walk in Brian? Is, is great. Yes, yes, and Tom. Uh, Carla, you're live on the Therapeutic Conversation Show, 108 Praise Radio. Hello. Okay, Brian, can Hi, Brian. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Good, Brian. This is Charlene. Good morning. How are you? Hey, Charlene Black. How Hi. are you, Reverend Charlene to be? How are you doing? Thank you for calling in. I'm, I'm doing great, Brian. I'm calling because Shanti Dots recently received funding from DBHDD. Yes. And the goal of the funding is for 
And DBHDD, as you all are aware, oversees the mental health funding across the state. Mm -hmm. And they are now reaching out to pastors and faith leaders to increase their awareness of mental health and to encourage them to have uh, community events. I'd like to know what Spencer thinks about a partnership between the faith community and the state. Uh, I think that would be great, and I'm I'm totally committed to helping that take place. So um, let's make it happen. You know, it, we need it. We need collaboration is the key to helping society. I think we can do more together than we can apart. Definitely, and there's funding available, right, Charlene? <laughs> Flag. Well, funding. Well, I'm believing that the funding will be expanded. Right now, Shanti is being funded to host these events across the state. So I'm praying that the second step, since that they're saying that this is important, is that they will indeed fund the churches to have these events. I don't have any knowledge of that. That's yeah. my prayer. Yeah, well, definitely, and um, I'm definitely going to post it on my Facebook. I already posted, I think, on my Facebook page about this conference, and you can register, and I know it's limited seating, and I did. I'm going to be there. I've already registered, but I know you're one of the presenters um, at that, yeah. and um, and I think the pass up Ebenezer, Dr. Warnart, mm-hmm. um, is on there, and there's some other other persons that are on there that are doing it. There's also a grant that's that's out for mental health first aid uh, too that is uh, is is currently going on where people are able to get that mental health first aid training and hopefully, Pastor, you'll bring the mental health first aid training to your church. I know Dr. Marla has already mentioned it because that is like first aid training and helping people you know, navigate that system. And it's an eight-hour training, but it's worth it. And that's yeah. what I want to say to you all, even in your areas. I mean, this is a national, international training that you can do for eight hours, it's called. And you can Google it. It's called Mental Health First Aid USA. I'm one of the instructors. I mean, you know, but throughout the nation, they have, um, you know, have have trainers. And you can Google and you can put in your address and it can tell you which ones are, you know, and some of these programs are free, some of those, you know, are cost. But you can save a life and you call and you become what we call mental health first aiders to be able to uh, get in there and really understand those components and I'm definitely available to come out to your churches and and to spiritual centers and to community centers it just it doesn't or businesses businesses need mental health first training you know and it gives you first aid steps dealing with depression dealing with anxiety dealing with what is mental health it's group activity so it's not all lecture you get hands on training with understanding what to do, the steps of what to do. We call it algae, and it's the steps of what to do if someone is having a mental health crisis. So thank, thank you, Reverend Charlene Flagg, L, look, LCSW. She's Ryan. been on the show before, yes. Charlene, Ryan, we're, we're definitely... May I ask one, Reverend Spencer one last question? Yes. yes. What message, Reverend Spencer, do you think that state officials need to hear? What would be the primary message about mental health coming from the perspective of a pastor to state officials here? To uh, help us remove the stigma. Yes. Um, You know, just talking about how common these issues are and that that, that they're they're not in this thing by themselves. I think that's the major bridge that that, that we need to build to let people know that it's, it's okay to seek that kind of help. I want to commit to you, uh, Charlene, that our church is ready. Uh, Dr. Mathis can coordinate efforts. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm I'm ready. I'm all in as it pertains to mental health. We we, we need it uh, in our schools, in our families. Uh, We we need this. I'll continue to preach the gospel, but as we collaborate together, I think the communities get better. Wonderful, wonderful. And and Charlene, this is Dr. Mathis. Um, I work for CSB at this time and very familiar with DBHDD. And so that's good to know that they have that interest, you know, in collaborating with churches and with pastors to move this thing forward. So as as Pastor Spence has said, we are definitely committed to doing what we can do um, to make this happen. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for calling, Reverend, look, Reverend Charlene, hey, thank, LCSW. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Reverend Spencer. And thank give you the guys. name of your practice, you. too. You in private practice, you know, in Conyers. So what's the name of your, um, I can't think of it in my head so tell me matters matters of the heart counseling services yes I work with both adults and children matters of the heart counseling services and also the faith-based mental health initiative yes where we have the 
every year. That I'm a part of. And so awesome, 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 awesome yes. work. Be encouraged. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for calling, okay? Thank you, Brian. All Thank right, you. all right, all right. So, I mean, so as we kind of wrap up, I mean, this time it just went. You know, as we kind of wrap up, you know, we want to just give some takeaways. You know, so so you said a whole lot, and, I, and I'm still <laughs> numb and in awe about what has been said. And, I mean, so many things are being said. And we definitely, hopefully, I know you have a busy schedule, but hopefully we can get you back to yes, just sir. say more, you know, as we begin, and you know, as we begin to do more things and um, – I'm just so convinced that I'm not trying to put everything on it because we haven't talked, but I want to partner with your church in doing something and just supporting what what uh, Dr. Marlowe's doing at the church. I mean, you know, and because I don't know whether you know, I'm not tooting my own horn, but Marlowe <laughs> was an intern of, I mean, you know, when she was getting her, her okay. you know, from her associate to full time license, so I supported her, and guess what she did? Because you know how, how things work. Then she supported me and my doctoral work. I followed the footsteps from Marlo. Right. But I go. supported her to get her license. And then she supported me in getting my doctorate. And that's how yes. friendship yes. and partnership yes. works. Yes. So I appreciate her. And, and she already know I'm there. But I am just hearing yes. some powerful stuff. We have one more caller to take before we get off the air. Caller, thank you for calling the Therapeutic Conversation Show, 108 Praise Radio. Caller. Hello. Uh-oh. Call, caller, you're live. Hello? Yes, caller. Uh, uh, how you doing, Dr. Brian? Hey, who, who is this? I know the voice. You got to tell me who it is. <laughs> this is this is this year, your, your, your father. Oh, yeah. hey. <laughs> I knew I knew the yeah. voice. William. Yeah. Welcome, William. What do you have to say? How, <laughs> how are you? Okay. I'm wonderful. I'm Thank you for calling. Is my mom there? Look, okay. this. No, we're going to make this a down home. Is my okay. mom listening today? I'm, right. I'm going to be very brief because I know you're not I know. I'm going to comment on the uh, pastor's uh, comment on being spiritually mature and emotionally immature. <laughs> Yes. I, I thought that was so poignant because I've experienced a lot of that listening to different ministers. Uh -huh. But anyway, I'd like to encourage you too. And your mom says hello. Oh, hello, mom. <laughs> I <laughs> love you. Okay. My mom is an All advocate right. supporter. So thank you for calling, William. I love you and I appreciate you. All right. You, you take care. Love All you right. Bye-bye. <laughs> So I tell you, this is a down home show. Even my my, <laughs> my parents, they get on board because they know I'm pre. You know, I'm you know I'm talking about this, and they are supportive. So I'm honored that you know. But I mean, but definitely my my father, he definitely will talk about mental health and and listens to sermons mm -hmm. <laughs> and messages in our area and and inform me. So let's just kind of wrap up because we got to end in a few minutes, and we just want to make sure that we are giving people takeaways because you said so much. And I just thank you so much for being a part of the show today. Um, what do you want people to know? And then talk a little bit about your church. Let me do that first. Global Impact um, Christian Ministries. Let's put a plug out because this is a healthy church. Yes, it is. To go to. I mean, I'm, it's so healthy that I'm going to be visiting because it's powerful. I'm hearing it. So talk a little bit about your church, the vision, the mission. We only got a few more minutes, but I just want you to put that out there. And then I know you have a website and all of those type of things. Yeah, the website is uh, globalimpactatl.org. Uh, we, we, we believe that we're a cutting-edge church. Um, we, we try to employ innovative systems and strategies uh, in our approach to people. Uh, we we want to evangelize those that are not churched or de church, yeah. and then those that are saved. We want to be a place of empowerment. Yes. So that, that's our goal is to empower people and to do it in a you know a fun way. Uh, the culture of the church is literally people feel safe because we have so much fun. We serve yes. together. Uh, we 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 do life together, and I guess um, we we do that every Sunday. Uh, there are multiple services you have. Uh, we're in Stockbridge, Georgia, yes. Henry County. Stockbridge has been in yes. the news a lot lately yes, uh, for some has. negative things, but mm -hmm. there are actually some good things that are going yes, on in the city. And we believe that the ministry is one of those good things. Um, as we talk about ministry, I guess one of the things I want to say in, in, in closing is that life is all about relationships. Yes. Um, the success of your life is going to be built upon the success of the relationships that you have. Yes. And what I discovered, you used the word uh, earlier today, um, tip of the iceberg, that yeah. phrase. Yeah. In most cases, what happened to people in life, they do relationships with only the tip of the iceberg. 
not knowing that there's wow. this massive surface beneath the tip. Mm. People get married to the tips yeah. of the iceberg. Yes. Then after the first year of marriage, that massive layer beneath starts to raise us. Yes. Head. So we got to figure out how to do life, not just engaging with those tips, but actually digging deep and getting to that stuff that yes. lies beneath the surface. And what I'm hearing is your church, you all do intentional ministry and preventative ministry. You know what I'm saying? But the intentional, you know, helping, you know, because and then it's relationship. Mm -hmm. It's about relationship. When I came in and you all did the presentation about your church, that's all I could hear is relationship. Mm -hmm. It's about building relationships. And that's so powerful. And people look, yo. You know, your congregation and ministers, everybody putting the address. Go ahead and put the website up there, yes, too. They got the address. Y'all go ahead and put it up. But this is a healthy church, and we need to be promoting healthy churches. Now, we do have one last caller, I think, on the line. Are you still there? Caller? They're welcome to the Therapeutic Conversation Show, 108 Praise Radio. Is the caller? Yes, this is Sonia Yaden. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Welcome to the Therapeutic Conversation Show. Good morning, good morning, and thank you guys so much. You guys have done a great job. And as always, uh, Pastor Spencer O'Neill, it is awesome to uh, hear from you. Um, and Dr. Mathis, what I wanted to say um, uh, about this situation is I appreciate you guys even talking about it because it's important for us. But what I wanted to know is how do you bring this, the counseling to not just yourself, like I go every Tuesday, uh, because I realized how much I needed the outside um, counseling uh, with no judgment zone. And, and it's safe and sacred, and I'm able to be myself and be transparent without worrying about judgment. But how do you bring your children and your spouse and your family in? Because I believe that children are suffering inward, and even though we're their parents, they're going to only tell us so much. But I believe that they need a voice in a place that they can speak as well uh, to get the help that they need because they're dealing with so much peer pressure, so many other things that are coming against them, especially in the society that we live in today with social media, the things that they're learning, and you're trying to teach them one way, but the world is also trying to teach them their way. Mm. Uh, Sonia, good to hear your voice. Always good to talk to you, Sonia. Um, Thank dual you. Dual relationships, dual relationships as a parent, most likely, especially with teens, kids are just not going to hear it from their parents. Uh, I have two yeah. teens, and what I try to do with my teens is to keep them in an environment to where they could get the help that they need, uh, like guidance counselors at schools, um, uh, organizations like the Deltas and the AKAs. They do tremendous jobs mm. with the debutante programs and the cotillion programs, uh, mentor programs for our boys keeping them in those environments to where they can integrate uh, mental health into those different programs. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes as parents, uh, you know, we can come across as being the little, uh, the, the authority in their life and being a little forceive. Mm -hmm. I think what has to happen is they have to hear it from other people. So I'm okay with putting yeah. my kids in those different types of programs so that they can get uh, another voice of reason. I think Isaiah chapter 1 says, come let us reason together. Mm. Find that voice of reason, Sonia, that can speak into your kid's life other than yourself or your, or your husband. And I think that you can you can get that help that you need. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for calling. Uh, all right. And thank so, you guys so much, and thanks for that information. Thank you, and and your social media is on it. They already got the Facebook page, the Twitter page, <laughs> everything up. So they on that's, it. So that's please, Stephanie. good job, please, Stephanie. Please, yes. please, please, please. You know, if you're in in Georgia, there's no reason why you can't go and visit, join whatever you need to do because this is a powerful word, and 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 I just love your heart, Pastor, and thank you for sharing today. I mean, excellent job, and Dr. Marlowe, you already know I. I appreciate you, and you just, you know, I just, I'm so excited <laughs> just to hear. And I'm telling you, and I'm being honest, you know, I do this, and I started off, and I was like, nobody really want to hear about mental health every week, but I'm not going to stop. 
I'm going to continue to talk about mental health until everybody gets the message about working on our mental health and, and incorporating that into our, our spiritual development. It has to be part of your spiritual development in working with your mind and your processes of your mind, and I'm not going to stop doing that, you know. And so I'm just so encouraged to hear other people saying it, yes. what I've been saying, what Dr. marlowe has been, you know, saying, you know, and I just, I'm, I'm just so honored. Um, also, I just want to give a shout out to 108 Praise Radio. Yay, we Woo! have, yes, we got an award, you all. Yes. Um, Atlanta Hottest Awards, Hottest Awards online radio show here locally, and we have won an award, not not just this, I mean, the, the 108 Praise uh, franchise, Voice in the Gospel, have won an award, and we've won several awards, yeah. so y'all just keep us in prayer, yeah. even as we're putting the gospel, we got different shows and different things that are going on all around you know, and putting out there, but we're winning awards, and it's awesome. So definitely thanks to Courtney and the staff and 108 Praise Radio, Voice in the Gospel, and they got some new people, um, personalities that are out there that are sharing, but everything is under Voice in the Gospel, spreading the good news. And here at the Therapeutic Conversation Show, we talk about mental health, spirituality, and empowerment. You can definitely reach me, too. You can Please like our Facebook page, all these new people from your <laughs> church. Please like our Facebook page therapeutic conversation so my numbers should go up this week also like the joshua generation care and consultant service facebook page which is my practice and um and, and you can reach us at www.joshua-generation.net where we definitely are a practice one pr one practice in three locations right now and we will be expanding we'll talk about that at another time <laughs> but um but we're getting the word out and we are really helping people in the community you know to deal with mental health Health, but also providing, as Pastor said, that safe place for pastors and ministers and congregations to come where they can get those services that they need. And Dr. Marlowe, you, how can they reach you? They can reach me via my email address. That's Mathis TS2018 at gmail.com. And I am Mathis Therapeutic Services, and I am up and coming working yes, with Brian, you are. and we about to do some things. So I'm really, really excited. Um, and those churches, honestly, if you are interested in learning more about mental illness, yes. mental health, and how your churches can get involved, that's my life's work. Yes, that's it is. That's my passion. So please hit me up on my email address, and we can talk and see how we can move forward with getting your ch churches healed and in a healthy place. Yes. And one thing I'd like Go to ahead. say before we leave is that I appreciate that connection that I have. You know, I've gone through some churches and had some situations <laughs> at some churches. And when I came to Global Impact Christian Ministries and I heard Pastor Spence talking about, you know, emotional healing and, you know, mental health, and he was talking to about it with conviction, I knew then and there that that was the place for me. Yes. And since I've been there, I mean, I have grown. I, he has embraced me as a person, you know, as a leader, as his elder, and it has just been a mm. good, good, good experience. And, you know, he is transparent, he is open, and I love that. And yes. that connection and that building that relationship is there. He cares about me mm. as a person, as a human being. I'm not oh, just a wow. number. And that makes a difference. And that's why you it's easy to, to follow such a wonderful and awesome man who loves the people, who loves his people, loves his family, you yes. know, family first. And that's a good example to follow. Yes, so it I is. appreciate you, Pastor Bless Spence. You. I appreciate Bless you for coming to this show and, you know, yes. uh, giving us this solid uh, knowledge. I knew it was going to be like this because I hear you every Sunday and Wednesday Bible study, and it's just been been a been a blessing. Yes, and I and I mean it's just powerful. So thank you for for definitely also 108 Praise Radio. Download our app, um, and you can watch all the shows and things and live and there's just some awesome things and they're expanding here at 108 Praise Radio. It's just so many good things that are going on, and y'all keep me in prayer as I continue to do this yes. work. You know, of putting it out every week. It's been over a year, and people. 
people are getting it, they're hearing it, and we're using show, you know, social media to be able to put that word out. And, um, and I want to leave, you know, and then I want you all to be thinking about just the final thoughts because we definitely have to go. But that shame, guilt, and cover-up, I'm going to be using that. I'm going to give you credit, but I'm going to be using that in my, in my sir, in everything I do, shame, guilt, and the cover-up. That's the problem. We got to start dealing with that shame, guilt, and the cover-up and that stigma of mental health. And so thank you, Pastor, for definitely what, and go ahead and tell them out there, right there, the camera's mm -hmm. right there. Tell them what you, you know, just a final thought. And then, Dr. Marlowe, I want you to close us out with a final thought, and we are done. But please like our Facebook page, Therapy the Conversation Show. And before I say anything, hey, baby, to my wife all and, right and, and now. kids. All uh, right now. Thank you so much. Uh, life is all about choices. It's about relationships. With every choice, there's going to be a consequence. Uh, the healthier choices we make, the more healthy re results we see in our lives. So I want to encourage people to know that you're only one decision away from the entire trajectory of your life changing. As we make better decisions, uh, life gets better. Uh, that's my whole goal mm. is to continue to grow and get incrementally better. In the book of Daniel, uh, there was a passage, uh, a scripture about Daniel and, and those three guys that hung out with them. Uh, they refused the king's portions. Yeah. They, they said, we're not going to do what the culture does. Yeah. We're going to work counterculture. Uh, wow. We're going to do what the kingdom does. <laughs> uh -oh. and, and once we become more kingdom-minded and not so mm. culturally-minded, I think we'll see the shift. And at the end of the three years of Daniel, mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego yeah. being observed, yes. the Bible said that they came out ten times better uh. than any of the other people yes. that were being considered. We're living so, our best life now. Yeah, that's my motto. I Just love keep it. getting 10 times better. God I bless you. I love, love you all. It. Thank you so much. And Dr. Marlowe, close us out and we have to go. Okay. <laughs> and just, um, I mean, just to piggyback on even what Pastor Spencer said, just do not allow anybody to stop you from being your best. Yes. Get the help that you need and grow in who you are and understand, get a knowledge of who you are so that you don't let others, you know, define who you are and have to validate you. So get the help we need and we're all going to be healthy together. Yes. Thank you all. And thank you all for joining us. This has been the Therapy the Conversation Show. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Jones, LPC. We're here every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Please share, like our page, send a comment, and uh, we are doing this thing, and I'm just ready for the new year as we go into stuff. And we will be talking about holidays. I don't like the word blues, but just challenges people, you know, have during the holidays this month, and also bringing some people on to do some creative things. So please watch our show, like our show every Saturday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on 108 Praise Radio. Thank you all for joining us.